This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Jed's Barbershop. With three locations now, you have no reason to not always look your best. Go get a haircut, a beard trim, or even a straight razor shave. Jed's Barbershop is open seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 9 to 7, and Sunday, 12 to 5. They have a location downtown at 212 South, 700 East, and in Sugar House at 2153 East, 2100 South. They just opened up a third location at 167 East, 900 South, right next to Randy's Records. No appointment is necessary? Head on over to jedsbarbershop.com for more information. Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. Welcome to episode 274 of I Am Salt Lake podcast. My name's Chris Hollifield. And I'm Chrissy Shelley. On this episode of the podcast, we sit down with Sasha Bloom and Marcus Hardy. We find out all about Utah Podcast Network. We find out why the name change, the podcast you can find on the network, and the struggles that come along with doing a network. Which have to be very many. I couldn't even imagine taking on this whole endeavor no. that Sasha has taken on with doing. I mean, what is there, it is, a dozen podcasts on there? Yeah, and he edits all of them. Oh my gosh. And we, we're going to get into that yeah, in, but in it, the conversation here. It's been so great because I watched from the sidelines as he kind of came in and gave this platform for all these comedians to be able to get their voices out there in a podcast form. And to see the excitement in people who are like, oh, we finally have a place we can go to create the podcast that we would do, but we don't have the equipment, we don't have the know-how. It's It's been a great opportunity. When I started I Am Salt Lake Podcast and I started bringing on some of the first comedians that I brought on, I was always sh- in shock of like, why are you not doing a podcast? Yeah. Sasha comes along and starts this network up. We're going to get into that here in just a minute. Of course, it was great to have Marcus here. He does two podcasts on the network, Mm -hmm. and so it was great to hear his input on it and kind of see how podcasting has helped him. Yeah, it's fun to get the story of the producer and the uh, talent in one spot. Absolutely. As always, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, head on over to our website, IamSaltLake.com. This is where you can find all of the back episodes right there. Listen, download, subscribe all at IamSaltLake.com. So listen up. We're talking podcast here. Chrissy and I have actually launched a brand new podcast. We did. We'd love for you to take a listen. It's called Mom and the New Dad. We're going to be sharing our joys and fears of parenting. Yeah. The story of having a new baby, the story of, of blending families. And it's it's been a real experience because I'm such a Like I was kind of leaving motherhood, you know, my kids were all old enough to kind of start taking care of themselves. And then we decided to start all over. And so we're going to be sharing that mom and the new dad, mom and the new dad.com. Right now you can actually find the podcast in iTunes. The first three episodes are up there. Go give it a listen, go subscribe, go give it a review. I I made a short link so you can go right in, uh, right to iTunes. Uh, If you go to imsaltlake.com slash new dad. It's going to take you right to uh, Mom and the New Dad and iTunes. So download, subscribe, check it out. It's a completely different side of us, Mm -hmm. way different than this podcast, but it would mean a lot for us. Don't listen with children. Yeah, that's that's (laughs) probably the uh, the biggest piece of advice that we can give. Hey, this episode is also sponsored by Oleo Skin and Beard. If you're like us, your skin is dry. And if you're like me, your beard is dry. You need to moisturize. Uh, Oleo Skin and Beard carries an amazing line of skin oils, beard oils, beard butters for moisturizing and shaping the beard, even some great facial cleansers. Such great facial cleansers. And their new soaps. That's the only soap I use in the shower now. It is. It's so great. Good stuff. Oleoskin.com is is their website. Go give them a try. Go check them out. They got some great new beard oil scents, including my new favorite, Redwood Embers. Again, Oleoskin.com. Dot com's their website. All right, let's jump into that conversation that we had with Sasha Bloom and Marcus Hardy as we talk all about the Utah Podcast Network. Enjoy. Do you go by, is it Marcus Hardy now? Before, we just knew you as comedian oh. Marcus. <laughs> Well, it's not a secret. It's just my, that's my last name. Yeah. It's not, it's, it was just before, when, before Facebook made me add one, I just didn't use it. 
Okay, okay. So Facebook was like, put a last you name, and I was like, name. fair. I didn't know if it was like Solid. this huge secret. You no, know? like it was kind of. And people like... would call me like Marcus. I still can't hear it, by the way, in here. Is it here? Not... I'll give you these ones. No, there just wasn't any. Vo- oh, there I am. Yeah, is there I go. There? Yeah, now it is. It just wasn't turned up. All right. Uh, but yeah, and then everybody would call me like, would refer to me as like Marcus the comedian or comedian right. Marcus, and I was like, well, it's not a, it's not a moniker. It's not like the fabulous <laughs> Mula. You know, like I'm Marcus is fine, and then so, but it's fine. You should I, refer to them as like civilian Joe. Yeah, right. No, it doesn't matter. And then, and now Hello, it just it's all Marcus man. And guy anyway, so it really doesn't apply. Well, no, and and I'm so I'm happy to have both you and Sasha have been on the podcast prior. Uh, I'm going to plug those actually now. You can go back and listen to Sasha Bloom, one sixty four. It was actually April twenty fifteen. And then Marcus was on 198. That was actually when we found more of his story. But today, I want to talk and get into finding out about the Utah Podcast Network. Yeah. That's what you have going on right now. That's what we're doing. That's, I mean, this, what you've created, Sasha, is, I'm not going to lie, it's something I kind of dreamed about doing. And you kind of took the bull by the horns and went in and did it. And I'm proud of you. Thank you. I had to do it. Yeah, somebody had to do no, it. No here one in else Salt is going Lake. to. Let's be honest. But I'm doing it the wrong way because I'm not selling it right now, <laughs> <laughs> which is the whole, which is kind of backwards. When you kind of create a business or you're trying to build a vision, like you're supposed to attach a price tag to it. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Now, what do you mean a price tag to it? Like what? You're not selling it. What? Uh... I'm not selling advertising. I'm not selling the studio space name. Why? Why aren't you selling any advertising? So anybody, if somebody's listening right That's now... That's a good question, <laughs> sir. Please answer to the man. The man answers. Well, see, seems like me, you're busy creating like a solid product, you know? Because how do you sell stuff if you don't have something to back it? I think when I first kind of started this idea and was hoping to get people to come along, I wanted to do it in three phases. So the first phase was, let's figure out a good website. Let's figure out, a, you know, because I had so many young quote unquote broadcasters, you know, Jason Harvey. Yeah. He's a comic, but he was super young in terms of having a microphone in front of your face and yeah. telling a story. Cause telling a story, I think Marcus is different than telling a joke, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Totally different yeah. ball game. Yeah. Especially, I mean, depending on, on whatever format your podcast is too. Yeah. I mean, some guys write for the comedy aspect of it. Some guys do uh, actual sketches and stuff like that. So the planning that goes into it is a lot different. Plus you're not getting the reaction of an audience. Mm. immediately you know you kind of have to think of it which more is kind of hard because you can't feed on that energy initially like you would from yeah, a yeah. live audience that's why i never treat podcasts like open mics i try just to talk you know so that it's yeah. never because you never want to like never have leave something a break that sounds for the like laughter. You, yeah like you need <laughs> like you need an apply like you're waiting for the reaction you know yep. mm-hmm. yeah you'd be waiting a long time yeah. <laughs> right folks <laughs> you know it's just yeah so it should just be natural. But he does. He gives us a great platform for that. I think well, that's and, cool. And that's what I kind of wanted to get, you know, to to talk about is you've created an amazing platform for especially a lot of the local Salt Lake City comedians like Marcus that's here with us today. I mean, because well, you do two podcasts mm-hmm. on the network, yes, which I, I want to get into. Sure. Uh, but somebody like yourself, you might not have done a podcast if somebody like Sasha didn't come along and offer you what he offers you, oh, which no. is, which is uh, basically it's not, I mean, he's not paying you. He's just no giving us the opportunity to giving record you the opportunity yeah. and producing to great quality material and also letting us like, that's the thing about it is that, you know, I kind of jumped on board the first podcast and then the second one, I, I basically was sitting around with, with my wife and friends and, and we came up with the idea and I emailed him. I said, Hey, can we do this? He goes, when do you want to start? You know, great. I and and without even like really thinking about it, I mean, the selflessness of it to kind of say, not only will I be there and offer you the studio time, but then produce these great sounding podcasts. I think it's really uh, it's really important because uh, there's a lot of things that, as um, I don't want to say artists, it sounds so stupid and pretentious, but like, but when you when I talk like not to say as a comic, but as like an expressive person, there's things that I'm not going to do on stage that are still part of my personality that I like to talk about and and get out of myself, you know. And uh, and so as long as people like to listen to you talk, it's cool to be able to talk on, about different things and have yeah. an outlet that gives you that opportunity. Sometimes you need that form of a creative outlet because mm-hmm. when you're when you're on stage as a comedian, it's like you create an identity and you have to stay within that identity right. all the time. 
That yeah. kind of sucks. Yeah, you can't you can't just start bullshitting with the front audience or front row uh, of the audience about your favorite bands or you know your favorite whatever it is uh, you know that you're into. Start BSing them with them about comic because you're isolating part of your group. So right. being able to kind of just have hey for those of you that like me and and maybe like this aspect of me or try this part of me or try this part of me. I mean that's that's what's super cool about it. Do you think being uh, uh Doing a podcast has helped your comedy career, though. Do you think like it's helped you stay connected to your fans, and 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 build even a bigger audience? Uh sure. I mean, I I think that it it helps. I think comedy is a conversation. You know, I think that the best comics they make you feel like they're talking with you, not just at you. So even if you're watching them on screen, you feel like you're part of their conversation, and so. Uh, I find that when people who who come to the shows then go out and listen to the podcasts, they come back to shows and they feel like they know you even more. They feel like they're more connected to you because now they understand you as a person. So they might understand your character as to where it comes from or the comedy a little differently. They might understand you or see you differently, see you more expressively. I don't know. It's pretty It's pretty interesting. We have a lot of people that will come to shows and then come up after and want to talk uh, about the podcast or talk about something they heard on a podcast. And do you like that? I do love you, it. Yeah. I think it's so cool because I, the, that's the reason the two podcasts I do are about stuff that I love Plug to em. do. What, what, which podcast uh, do you do? I do, well, I do the Dirt Pod podcast, which was uh, actually originally started by Guy Seidel, my comedy partner. He did four or five episodes, and it was more like a, an interview type uh, podcast where guys would come on and he would have them talk about the the weird and kind of kooky parts of their job you know the dirt dish the dirt so he would have a former sheriff and quacky different... talk I think yeah it, wasn't it that. it was Bo Babka was I think the was yeah Bo Babka was first on episode there. yes uh-huh. and uh and by the fifth episode he had me and Alan Handy from K-Bear uh disc jockey from K-Bear uh, on there and we just talked about music and just t- did like top fives and this kind of stuff that we would do if we were sitting around doing that anyway without microphones and it was so easy and so the next week he goes hey that was fun you guys want to come back and we did and then it just became that and so that was that podcast is more um pop culture and music and our our take on things and uh, you know bitching about getting older and and you know stuff like that. Dudes kind of just talking about about our about the stuff we like talking about. And uh, and then uh, I I started another one about what was it three or four months after I started doing Dirt Pod um, called Area Fifty Two, which is a podcast that does uh, unexplained conspiracy theories, uh, monsters, paranormal, supernatural, um, unsolved murders, like all like the that. cool stuff. Yeah, yeah stuff that I yeah. like talking about. Me and my wife were super into that kind of stuff. And we uh, started it with another comic, uh, Eric Ripley, um, who's gotten super busy and we've actually transitioned. And now we do it with another comic. Uh, Melissa Merlot has stepped oh, right in. On. So she's actually, and she's super into this stuff. And so we've covered everything from, you know, the JFK, 9-11, to uh, you know, crazy conspiracy theories like the Earth is hollow, the Moon is fake, you know, time travel. I mean, we—it's a really fun thing to research and and talk about. So it's parts of my my personality that are are definitely uh, absolutely part of who I am. But uh, uh, it's just stuff that I can't really just break into on stage. And how often yeah. do you do those podcasts? Every week, every couple weeks, or Area Fifty Two is every week. Um, and then, uh, dirt pod is twice a month. So I do six podcasts a month. Wow. You're in the studio a lot. Well, and what we do is the days that we do dirt pod, uh, we just, I'll do two back to back. So we'll do dirt pod and then record area after, and then area will just come in the next week on its own. But yeah, so three hours I block out for him. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll sit there and I mean, we, we really research on area. We really, it's a researched podcast. We really try to, to, you know, come up with because uh, you can make yourself sound really stupid. Yeah, yeah if you don't yeah, know what you you're talking about, yeah. people will be googling and listening and just <laughs> sending you emails, calling you on your show. right. You have yeah. to kind of look at both sides too. You can't be biased, and and it's so it's a really fun podcast to research. But then Dirt Pod is always just we never know what we're talking it's just about. Your opinion, right? And we on just stuff. go in, and guy will go, eh, I've got this thing today, yeah. and then it somehow becomes ninety minutes later. So oh no, I mean they're they're both podcast. great podcasts. Yeah. And I mean honestly. 
if you're not subscribed now, uh, go subscribe to an do iTunes. It. I mean, do it, right? Well, and the cool thing about like your network too is it has a lot of that. It has a lot of different oh, yeah. s- types of podcasts so everybody can kind of find something that they like. And I think, because like, I'm not super into music, yeah. so, you know, the Dirt Pod isn't my jam. Right. But the Area 52... But I don't even think, it. I think even if you're not a big music nerd, you could still like listening to uh, Dirt That's Pod. That's true. I mean, yeah. I, I enjoy hearing, you know, some of your, your thoughts on, on like, you know, even old, like, I swear there was an episode in like old 80s cock rock or, you know, the, the, yeah, the, we the, did a the, whole, we had a whole, like, we had to expel our gla- glam rock all Yeah, the glam time. rock, <laughs> it's, it's uh, cock absurd. rock stuff, you know, and, and then like bands that were ripping off other bands yeah uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh beats and stuff like that you straight know straight up so. yeah ripping people off it's yeah it's been fun to kind of explore music and but it's also and that that podcast to be honest uh has given me some ideas because now with the music show i do with guy like a lot of the stuff that we explore um has kind of either our practicing has led to topics for the podcast or the podcast has led to us going oh that's not a bad idea so yeah yeah, it's kind of just long form bullshitting, which most comics realize is where great ideas come from. Oh, absolutely. I want to get back to the network. The, when when I had you on uh, episode one sixty four, mm-hmm. it was Earhole Media. Yeah. So why? Well, first of all, just to kind of even catch listeners up, when did Earhole? Because Earhole Media turned into Utah Podcast Network. When did that start? Like, how long ago have you been doing the network? Did, did you start it? Like, a, approximately? Are we? Two years in, uh, two years like this month maybe to to uh, of ear hole media. I dare say YouTube. we are. Yeah, it's yeah. right around two years. So why the name change? What I mean, a, I, a I couple, kind of couple followed of the story a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a couple but, of. I think there's a couple. Of, I think it's hard to spell. I was really drunk when we decided it. Oh wait, because it there's was no, ear hole as in yeah. the whole ear yeah. instead of the in your ear yeah. hole. Okay. Ear hole media. Put it in your fucking ear. And I was really drunk, and I was like, all right, yeah. let's type that in. You know, and then the more you wake up and it's almost like sleeping with the fat girl, you know, you just kind of wake up and you're like, oh, oh that was a bad sure. idea. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, that was rude. The name change Utah Podcast Network. Network yeah. It's just Utah Podcast Network dot com. Yeah. Why? What? What? I think. Why that name? I think that people in Utah really identify with the term Salt Lake City with Moab. Well, of with course. Utah. And then yeah. I am Salt Lake. Yeah. Come and on. Yeah. Represent. Right? Yeah, I, you got to be I, proud absolutely. of where you're from. And I then think so. I think you got to put your name on it. Like I've, I, when I was talking to Marcus, he brought up, well, let's make it bigger so that it's more inclusive to the country and the world and everyone listening to it. But it's like, well, yeah, that's going to be part of our audience. But when we, if we ever go and sell advertising, I don't want to just, I want to get more, be more like what you're advertising, more local, more meaningful. Sure. Because we're always going to have a bigger audience probably in Salt Lake than we are in New York or something because instantaneously, like they're from Salt Lake, they don't know shit. So I just, it's just Utah Podcast Network. It's Plus simple. It's would be fun to surprise people. Like look what, look what came out of Utah. Yeah. Like, well, and it's easy to remember. Surprise. And if you're not one of the smartest people, or you have learning disabilities, it's very easy to spell. As where ear home media, kind of tough to spell. You know, so that was that that was a primary change. And then Andy Gold being in my ass for a year and a half about how I was ripping off Jimmy Pardo and his podcast network, Earwolf. And so that was always kind of in my head because I am a journalist. I am a broadcaster. I want my you were worried name about that to be a little bit. Uh, respected. Like you can call me a piece of shit. Right. But I don't think you can call the network a piece of shit. Beca- and I do. I, wa- I, I call him a piece of shit <laughs> all the time. And, so you know, and so and then here here comes a deeper <laughs> thought. What happens if Marcus is on the road in San Francisco and runs into Jimmy Pardo? They go and have a great conversation in a dinner. He finds out he's on a podcast network called Earhole Media. How would Jimmy take that? I, I think, you know, and I mean, it might be overthought, sure. but yeah, you know? I think you've way overthought it. I've never even met Jimmy Pardo, and let alone had dinner with him. <laughs> I think we're probably safe. Well, um, good, but I, I mean, but we you have would like to it. have dinner with. Yeah, him, I'm, I'm, sure. not, I'm not opposed to it, but Jimmy. If you're out there, I, I don't know what you're doing later this week. Uh, I'm free Wednesday if you are. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's fine. I think it's a great, great name. Um, and to be honest, yeah, I, <clears throat> I had my reservations at first because I did think like, yeah, we shouldn't. We shouldn't necessarily just reduce it to just being something like Utah Podcast Network we want to play to the world. But at the same time, all of us talk about being from Utah. We all reference being from Utah. We're all very clearly Utah through and through, uh, born and raised in in our beliefs and the way we approach things. And, and so I think it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, we're not secretive as to where we're from. 
uh, none of us uh, kind of hide it on the podcast or anything like that. So, and I think it's really cool because for Area, I can only I can speak for my podcast in general, but Area has a huge following uh, overseas. Like we have a big following in the UK, and so uh, it's interesting to talk to people and for them to go, you know, just to talk to people and and then to find a little podcast from Utah, like, and know that it's from Utah, not, you know, and go, yeah, yeah, we love it. We love it even because it's this kind of unique thing that we've found. So I'd love for it to be bigger by all means, but I do love the, like, not necessarily our quaintness, but like, uh, it's ours. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I got you. Yeah. I like that about it. <clears throat> Another example before yeah. you start going, I work at iHeartRadio and so I'm around a lot of radio people. And even in the advertising of radio, there's, you know, they've created the iHeartRadio app where they have a lot of their shows doing podcasts on it. And a priori to the name switch, people will be like, hey, how's your podcast thing going? Fantastic. Now it's like, hey, how's Utah Podcast Network? Advertise or salespeople have come up to me. My general manager sat me down for an hour and buzzed my brain about it. And so I think that putting your name on that was important. Absolutely. Run down the list. What podcasts are on the network right now for people listening to go check them out. Let's yeah. let's run down the list okay. of what's on there. So we have Andy Gold's Big Wet Podcast. He's finally back. He, he's finally, yeah. which I want to get into more of that, but, yeah. but keep going. Uh, Camp Jackie with Jackson Banks. He's a great comic. It's, uh, it's a real throwback to 60s and 70s radio where he just does really vulgar skits and... They, you know, they play sound clips and kind of stuff like that. It's been on a bit of a hiatus, but he's coming back. Excellent. Uh, Jason Harvey, stupid questions. Like he's interviewed a senator. He's interviewed a woman with AIDS and a woman with cancer. And he just kind of explores life. It's not a super funny show. It's more of Jason trying to figure things out. That, that was how I found out Eileen Dobbins was homeschooled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And her and I connected. I was like, oh, I was homeschooled too. <laughs> That's why we're weird. You and Seth and, and ate lunch together alone. <laughs> anyway, but it's, uh, keep, which is a great podcast, yeah. Jason Harvey's yeah. podcast. We've got uh, the People's Podcast um, or the People's Pod Show, which is by this man named Keith McDonald. He writes for Slug and City Weekly. He's an Air Force guy, a black guy. And then he does, Nate Chacon just uh, joined him. He's an Air Force guy. So it's strictly a hip-hop show, and they bring in tons of hip-hop artists, and, you know, they have breakbeat sessions and battle raps, and it's a good show. Like, Keith McDonald, I think, is one of the best broadcasters in Utah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious why I've never been asked to be on that show. I got bars. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'll get it done. I uh, just signed another new show, which I don't think anyone knows. Uh, Brittany Johnson from ABC4. She's a reporter. You'll see her on TV five days a week. She's doing a sports show. And she's a black woman. And I think that that's a very important voice to have in this city. She's the only black reporter in Utah, if that doesn't draw a tear to your eye. You'll have to connect yeah. me with her. I'd like to bring her on. Yeah, you should uh, absolutely have her on. Yeah. yeah, before she uh, gets bumped up to a new market, because that will happen for her. Um, Johnny McKeon, who works at K-Bear, he used to work at Broadway. He and I do a show called Old Ute Radio. It's kind of how this whole network started was me needing uh, something to wrap it around, you know, because I, I didn't know if our show was strong enough to do that. But we mostly focus on media. We'll have some podcasts in, our comics in. Uh, we've had Big Buddha, Kim Fisher, uh, the news director of ABC4. We've had... You've had us. We've had, we've had you oh, yeah, several times. In. Chrissy was on there uh, one time. Rich Voss, Joey Diaz. So we've had, you know, we have a lot of... We try to stack shows with really interesting men, women, and other. You get a really big variety of people. Yeah. From like all different aspects of the Utah world. Yeah. And I think Johnny is trying to force me to bring it back more of old radio when it was at the U where we expand the show and do more talking. I don't know if we'll expand on the length of the show, but we'll probably do more shows a month and have one week we'll have a feature show and then the other one we'll just shit on the news and whatever we think about. Sure. Because Johnny likes that. We have The Dirt Pod with uh, Guy Seidel, Alan Handy, and Mark. Uh, Area 52. Uh, Dylan Mazziotti's doing uh, Your Creativity, which is a very interesting show. He does it with uh, Steve Hatch from... Uh, the, the Hatch Ch Chocolates. Yeah. yeah. And that's a very interesting show because Dylan's... Um, he's really introverted. And Hatch is just a great communicator. And so... Steve. We went and ghost hunted his chocolate. Did you? Chocolate store. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Is there a ghost in there? They think so. They think there's stuff there. It's an old building. Plus, they're right by the hospital. So 
it's so like dead bodies are just, just always like, walking and there's over a cemetery there. energy going too. through there huh. but yeah he it was fun we spent a night down there with him and kate and just walking around and cool dude yeah it's yeah. fun it's he's fun to have on that podcast too we got a seven-time emmy winner rick aaron on the show he will not do the show until he finds a suitable co-host because his co-host moved and i have uh, yet to explore that and he hasn't either but it's still up there. There's some amazing interviews up there. Yeah, Rick's a great guy. He's he's been he's on, been on your show. Yeah, long time. He's ago. been podcasting for a long time. Yeah, but uh, his buddy Dave Wilbur, who was kind yeah. of one of the early hands in Salt Lake podcasting, um, he moved to San Francisco. So yeah, Dave but that's Wilbur, still up there. Yeah. I I really hope I'm not leaving anyone else. I should out. I, I should have pulled it up here on the on my would, internet? Oh, uh, late night family values with Aaron oh, Orlovitz and yeah. gosh, Jonathan that is, a, that is a great just, show killing people like they're literally <laughs> murdering people on air and it's some of the funniest stuff in the world and i'm really happy i had this experience with uh andy gold because they definitely like intentionally try to trigger me but it's not going to work this time and you, you have- know i used to listen to andy Gold's show like religiously yeah. back in the day and i always felt so bad for you i was like poor sasha <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, you just want to go back and listen to him abuse you more and more. And then you have uh, Toy Soup. I don't know. Is that still uh, going or no? That's... Andrew Jensen and them? Yeah. I, it wants to go. Part of the problem is Andrew has a brand new baby. Okay. And that, yeah. That and they the both kind of, you know, Andrew also works in media. So he's working 15, 16 hour days. And Troy is just down to do it. So hopefully that comes back. I know we've been talking back and forth, but it's just. It, we record on Sundays, and it's really tough to get everyone's schedule in. All the all the podcasts are recorded on Sunday. I'm there about six to seven hours every Sunday. Wow. Yeah. But I do my work at the radio station, so yeah. it's not really a big deal. Yeah. That way I don't have to be at the station on Monday. Like, who yeah. wants to go to work on Monday? Right. We actually, let's Nobody. take a quick break yeah. here really quick, and then we'll come back. I got I got a bunch more questions yeah. here to ask you, but we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Sasha, and Mark is here in just a second, so hang tight. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Jed's Barbershop. With three locations now, you have no reason to not always look your best. Go get a haircut, a beard trim, or even a straight razor shave. Jed's Barbershop is open seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 9 to 7, and Sunday, 12 to 5. They have a location downtown at 212 South, 700 East, and in Sugar House at 2153 East, 2100 South. They just opened up a third location at 167 East, 900 South, right next to Randy's Records. No appointment is necessary. Head on over to jedsbarbershop.com for more information. What's been the toughest thing for you running a podcast network? Or is there anything that's been tough for you? Mm, yeah, there's some stuff I'm really not good at. Um, <laughs> uh, trying to get my butt off the couch and go talk to a lawyer about you know how to formalize my company so that I can sell it and buy music rights and do all this kind of stuff. You would think, because you two are very motivated and have kind of taken that ball and run, I well, don't Chrissy's to... motivated. I I just kind of do it and say, well, why isn't the magic happening? I'm Chrissy's just aggressive. Like, okay, let's no, do this, right? Yeah, no offense to women, but it's women are really good at like shaping men into oh, that, good that's, human that's beings. Why I think need, we just don't have the kind of time that you guys we, have. We're just like, come on, them, right? I got to go do something else now. Let's yeah. get it done. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, you, you and were... that's the whole thing is I don't have the time. Like, yeah. I work a tremendous amount. I have a kid who is in high school, and I'm trying not to alienate, even though you know, that whole part of life is difficult because he's a teenager now. Dealing with everyone's personality is really tough for me because I'm kind of one of those in-between alpha caricatures. Caricatures. So when I have a conversation with Marcus, you know, if like I think he's using too many ums or buts, he's going to go, fuck you, Sasha. That's how I talk. And instead of me challenging him back on that saying, dude, it's what's best for your listeners. And then us coming to an agreement. But those are challenging. It's like, because guy, guy said, oh, to me, is really intimidating to talk to. So it's is like, really? how do, how do <laughs> I... such a teddy bear. 
<laughs> Why are you intimidated I'm to think by of him guy? As intimidating. Also, I don't say I fuck you. Have you do you I'm follow him on? Dude. Do you follow guy on Facebook? He's intimidating. No, this see, here's not. the thing. He Listen, pre- okay, <laughs> guy pretends to be intimidating, and he's really just the nicest person. He's you like could ever that meet. little Lamisil troll from the video, you know, where he just gets in your toenails and gets angry, but he's not gonna do anything. He's just, no, he's just he's gonna, like the nicest. He's the I've sweetest. never thought of him as intimidating. The thing about Guy, Guy, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. Guy yes. would say, he's, he's listening right now, Guy. Guy, would guy. Say we, the we, same. we love you here, guy buddy. Would say, we love you. I, the same about me. Guy yeah. would say, well, isn't Marcus intimidating to you? Like, because he sees, I, I, I don't know, I don't see him, like, we're pretty, have a, we have a pretty good relationship, but I don't see why he'd be intimidated by either one of us. See, we're both okay, pretty laid back. This is gentlemen. the thing, though, honestly, I think everybody's intimidating until you get to know them yeah. a that's, little bit. That's probably and true. And that, that's what the beauty of doing But I've podcasts. known him for two years, yeah. and I'm still, you still you need to, you just, yeah, just, we just don't, we don't talk a lot. Like, sure. um, you just we don't text that, a lot, man. we don't do all that stuff. Just check so. in sometimes. We don't text a lot either, though. No. Just, just hit him up. I don't up. text a lot with well, anyone. Well, Guy. Guy and me don't. Oh, Seems like yeah. you guys need to work on some friendships here. Yeah, I feel yeah. like, like all, I feel some... like that's just communication <laughs> just, issues. Should we hug a little bit? We need a little yeah. bit of yeah. therapy. Yeah. That's not, <laughs> I check in with my friends all the time just to see how their day was. You don't, you don't text do every things. all of your friends at night and tell them you love them before you go to sleep? No. Man. Anyway. Come on, anyway, Sasha. That's so, only like three yeah. texts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> three? That's one. And that ain't my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so so where were we at? We were talking about... Uh, the uh, struggles. Or, yeah, the yeah. struggles. What's been tough? Uh, having guilt on not paying these uh, talents on my network. But, but is that typical in a network to pay? I mean, I... Mean, I y- you don't. They they do it because they love it. I mean, Marcus was just saying how much he loves doing. I never it. expected to get paid doing this. If we ever made one cent off of this, I'd go. All right, whatever. Like to me, this is an outlet. Like I said, of something that I don't get to talk about otherwise. Uh, I mean, all of these podcasts began because either me and Guy were sitting around having these conversations at his house, or me and my wife were sitting around with our friends having these conversations at our house. We were either going to continue to talk about these things and go in circles, or we were going to, or we were going to have somebody come along and give us a creative outlet to go. No, look, we've addressed Prince's death. We've addressed th- uh, this conspiracy theory. If you want to hear our take on that, go listen to the episode of our podcast. So we don't have to continually just have these whirling dervish ideas and conversations. You know, we can put them to a record, if you will. And so, to me, getting paid for that is kind of obscene. I mean, I understand that there's people out there like Rogan and Mark Marin who get so many listeners that it tops what radios, uh, radio stations get or tops what television markets get. So it makes sense for you to buy, you know, commercial space on their podcast because 45 million people are going to listen to it or whatever. Right. So that makes sense. Joe Rogan, actually 90 million downloads a month 90 million 90 million <laughs> people so you go okay 90 wow. million people or whatever listening a month that's insane right but that makes sense i don't have any f- there's nothing fooling my brain thinking that we get anywhere near that we probably get i don't even know what we get if if a dozen people listen to my podcast hooray people yeah. listen well, so i i feel like i feel like like getting paid is anything we ever make i would just like i said i just put it back into this to to pro- you but know, here, keep doing okay, this. Keep, we're, we're, we're on that tip, though. I mean, money. okay, we're on that tip. And would you feel the same about comedy shows? You expect to get paid for comedy shows, right? So maybe podcasters should get paid, too. Well, like I said, I, th- I feel like if, a, if, if I'm an act in a comedy club and my presence sells X amount of tickets and that X amount of tickets also equals X amount of drink sales and sure. food sales, I get it, yeah. that's different than if I'm just setting up my own bullshit show at a bar and my presence doesn't have any bearing on how much more money they make sure sure so yes i do believe that yeah that's the way to get paid for that if my presence on a podcast created enough buzz and interest that created enough listeners that we we outranked radio or other places for people to invest in then that would be that and i I, absolutely and i was just using an example because i think a lot of people look at podcasting they don't realize the time that gets put into it right you know the editing the producing he should get paid well exactly and that's that's why i think a lot of people don't don't realize i mean just even the time you put together to to put your shows together i mean yeah it's a hobby yeah we love it 
But at the same time, we could be doing other things with that time. It's a very time consuming and financially consuming hobby. It is. Well, I think coming from a broadcasting background, I think there's certain podcasts that are critical to our democracy. I think it's very important to understand who's living in your city and that those power brokers have a long form conversation because you can listen to any of the radio broadcasters in Utah outside of maybe two or three shows and you can listen to any person on TV, but you're not going to know who they are because there's nowhere they're going to be able to have a long form interview. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere, there's a, there's nowhere for a Senator to have a long form interview in the state of Utah outside of a podcast. Nowhere. Yeah. And maybe KRCL, but not really since their new program director. But you can do that in podcasts in Utah. And that happens once a week at, you know, on these very various podcasts. We haven't had any senators on. No, you I just want to, I just want to clear my, you haven't. I haven't done that yet. We did talk extensively about, <laughs> um, about our poop habits on the last dirt pod. That's I will say that. So it's kind of like, important. it's kind of like politics. Did, it, well, I have to go but listen to that. I have some interesting poop habits myself, <laughs> yeah. so I could have chimed in there. I'm, I'm not going to lo- listen to that one. It would have been a but, good... It, no, it's it's fine. Not necessarily like about the poop, but like, like using restrooms at stadiums or with other people there. Oh, right, like if you can poop or, in public. Or, or yeah, you, there's right. a, do you okay, stand okay. when you wipe or do you sit when you wipe? I mean, we, these we are discuss, important things yeah. to talk about. Well, Why would you stand? True. It would clench your cheek shut. Are you standing? Not and, necessarily. And, How are you standing? Well, up. Like it, like how are you standing? You gotta like, you gotta like squat stand. Well, that's you know? not. That's just. That's just a hunch. That's just. That's like. That's like you're still in the woods. Are you like you have to lift? You can't. You, what you're trying to sneak your hand between all this closed <laughs> space? That's ridiculous. That would be tough. These kind of conversations. All right, those are what, important conversations. Right, I'm on board. So well, yeah, they're conversations that usually get neglected. Yes. Sure. And those are the things I think that people like to listen to. You know, there's a, there's something to that. I I actually enjoy listening to podcasts now more than I listen. I like listening to music sometimes because I, there's something to be to like go back and listen to these conversations and kind of hear people talk and hear people, um, like you said, have these long form conversations that you're not going to hear. That's you're, very stimulating. Yeah, like you feel. I I get more personally out of podcasts than music now. Like I have a hard time listening to music because I'm yeah. like, this is nice, but my I'm, brain isn't being stimulated. You know why? It's because we're all at that age where like we don't like new music, and we've listened to all of the music that we like so oh, much shit. that we don't want to hear it anymore. You're right. So that's kind of the age that you're at. Pretty soon you're gonna hate everything because you're not gonna want to like <laughs> yeah, to listen to what true. you like to. Because oh my, I don't want to hear this song again for the nine. And I don't want to hear people who are younger than me talking. No. Mm-mm. So you're just gonna <laughs> yeah. listen to people your own age bitch about getting older on podcasts. Oh, it's gonna be the best. Yeah, I love it. It's going to be fantastic. Any new shows coming to the podcast? That well, I guess that one with Brittany that you're Brittany in. Johnson and Andy Gold, and I'm done. I don't have any more time. I don't. I'm out of studio time. Like, okay, so that you're you no you're I was because I was curious like what do you look for when you bring a podcast on and stuff like that. But I guess you know if you're not bringing any more on. No, I mean if I am Salt Lake approached me, but I wouldn't even know how to work that. But yeah, you I've told you that from four years ago open invite anything i'm doing yeah but outside of you no i don't have the time i think that we have enough diversity on the show i think the shows are all starting to get really good each show is starting to build their own audience and that's true there's people that'll listen to one that won't listen to the other oh absolutely absolutely my question for you one thing one thing i've i've always been curious of is like you'll see a lot of podcasters uh like you don't really see a lot about utah podcast network itself you you haven't used social media a lot no i don't and a lot of that is i don't like to do it uh-huh. but um i kind of rely on that's their part like yeah. i can't hold everyone's hand and i don't want to hold hands yeah i want to give you studio time and I want to have the privilege to produce your show. So you're not really there to advertise them. And they kind of promote you're, their own. Promote their own shows. Also, I've spent a lot of money on an artist, and I haven't come up on an idea for a logo yet. That's kind of the holdup of yeah. not doing that push. Sure. It's because, you know, we've come up with stuff that would work, but I, I want something iconic. Yeah. Because if I'm alive in 10 years, this network's going to be alive. Sure, yeah. sure. You need to create branding well, identity I mean, across yeah. the I was just curious, you know, yeah. if there was a strategy there or if there was kind like of... Like yeah. when we earlier in the podcast, when yeah. there's things I'm really bad at... Yeah. Check mark on that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. No, you know? I know. I. Uh, 
it's impossible to be able to hit every aspect of that because there's so much involved in it. Yeah. Like the branding and identity, social media marketing, editing, those, those scheduling. are full-time. Yeah. Editing, even, even just scheduling. Holy yeah. crap. That's huge. Do you schedule all the people that come on these old podcasts? Sasha, I or? don't even schedule my show. That's Johnny McKean's job. So, so people you bring on guests, I you bring will on not nothing, help. Huh? You know, if there's someone I think that's really cool that would work, I might pass an email name along, but I will not do that. Yeah, I don't have time for that. It's up up to the other shows yeah. that, that are doing it. What advice would you give either one of you, Marcus or Sasha? I mean, Chris, you can jump in here too, I guess. It, but what advice would you give somebody who wants to start a podcast just in general? Is there any kind of advice you would give them? Yeah, I would ask them five questions. Who, what, when, where, why? Why are you going to do this? Who is your audience? That sounds like homework. Well, uh, so I but guess it being is. good at something, yeah, is takes effort. Mm-hmm. You have to have a real plan true. before you start. I think so. Yeah. Unless you're just that funny fuck, and you can just go in a room with anyone and it's hysterical. Do you, but do you think a podcast has to always be funny though? No, no, I, no. no. I, I think that you have to be engaging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has it, humor it, helps, but you have to be engaging. Yeah, and you can't rely on your guests. You know, it has to be about you. I think that's one of the hardest parts that I think anybody really has to deal with is like, who are you? And also, who aren't you? You know, I think that's why, like, I'm far more comfortable with myself at 40 than I ever was at 30 or 20, especially 20, because you don't have uh, the perspective of life. And so once you kind of get to a point where you can kind of look back, you realize this is why these things are successful. So if you're young, Here's a here's a tip for skipping all this time. Look, be realistic with yourself. Know who you are, but more importantly, know who you aren't. So if you're going to start something where people are going to listen to you talk, talk about things you want to talk about. I would tell the same thing to a comedian, right? Like, like if you're going to be gonna, passionate, right? If you're yeah. going to do an hour, if you're trying to do an hour on stage, then what are you going to do? Talk about bullshit for an hour, or are you going to try to talk about things that you care about? So fi- so find what what you care about in comedy, and then find the funny in that. That should be what you do that's what great comics do richard pryor set himself on fire smoking crack cocaine found the funny in it and turned it into a great comedy special you know a guy like gaffigan just looks around his house sees his life turns hot pockets into a comedy special why because he found funny in something that he wanted to talk bullshit about right and that's what a a great podcast should be is just you what would you sit around and talk about with your friends Mm -hmm. right what do you talk about great find an outlet for that you know I talked about the things I talk about on these podcasts. Uh, you know, I've been able to get a lot of this stuff out of my system that I wouldn't have otherwise done. And I think if you go in trying to think of yourself as like a broadcaster or playing the part, it's like the same thing. Again, all my all my metaphors are comedy related. But like if somebody goes on stage and does the what they think a comedian should do, hey, everyone, how's the, how's it going? Boy, the other night I was, you know, it's like, no, you're not a comic. You're, you're doing what you think a comic should like do. People resonate with your authenticity, exactly. no matter what that is. So yeah. be you. Just be you. It doesn't matter. If people don't like that, there's a thousand other podcasts and they'll listen to it. There's a half of my fan base doesn't give a shit about my conspiracy theory, Sasquatch fascination. They don't care. They don't want to. But you know what? That's fine. They still come to my shows. They don't have to listen to that podcast. I'm not offended. So just be you. And be genuine, and uh, whatever part of you you want to bring out, just but but be you. I think remembering that words hurt. Uh, there's... <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> no, I've 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 been in trouble by a lot Buzz of people kill. for things I've said on no, podcasts. That's true. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, like like make up an example. Give me an example. I mean, I'm curious. Uh, Christian Piper. I pissed him off real bad one time just to keep it about people that kind of know. I. Uh, I remember I got scolded at by a five foot four, blonde haired, hundred and ten pound girl who was gorgeous about me destroying Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift. Really? At the U, huh. yeah. Wow. She was about to kill me. Wow. Yeah. You bringing up Christian Piper reminded me of what I wanted to ask you about yeah. Andy Gold because you brought Andy Gold back on the podcast yeah, network because you 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 kicked him off or something or what what happened there or do you not want to talk about that? Uh, you parted ways. Yeah, he told me fuck you. I quit. Okay, so he quit. Yeah. And then you wanted to bring him back on. Yeah, big mistake. Well, of course, of course. Big Wet Podcast, one of my favorite podcasts. <laughs> but, okay, so um, well, let's get into this angle. In the Utah Podcast Network, but he's in California. Yeah. So what's. Well, he's 801, but 
why there might be a Los Angeles okay. podcast network. Okay. okay. I, I think it's franchisable. He's, he's you know. Utah by heart. No, and, yeah. and, 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 and he'll I'm, probably I'm, be I'm back. Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a hard time. No, he'll Sasha, probably be I'm back. You, you know, who knows? But Let's just hope he fails miserably and has to come back, right? <laughs> God willing. <laughs> this Christian, only. Christian blows up with a $10 million have you, a have you Have, have yeah. you run away to L.A., Marcus? You haven't run away? You've, you've stayed here. It seems like every comic here feels they need to run away. It depends on what you want. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. If my time would have been right after last comic and it, was, it just wasn't my time. I just didn't do it. My roots are here. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I've... For better or worse, I guess I've been able to develop into who I am today, and and have the time to develop the ideas, the podcast, the music show, all of the you know the internet show, all the stuff that I've done is all because I was given the opportunity here. Sure, so sure. no, I was just curious. and you've gotten creative and taken your talents and kind of moved into different arenas and tried different things. It's yeah. interesting how you've kind of instead of just getting up and only going to to comedy shows all the time, yeah. gotten out and. and done different things yeah which i think is unique for stand-up comics i think you need to diversify yourself yeah i think that after a while you know like i said people grow up and uh for me it was it kind of happened during a, a growth period you know where i i kind of was uh, very early on got got the opportunity to do something cool and then kind of had to figure out how to deal with that you know and so that's really what it comes down to and so for me it was uh it was more like you know just exploring who i am like I said, and trying other aspects of myself that I wanted to uh, explore. And so now, uh, yeah, I'm not, I, I, <laughs> being a stand up comic, like alone, just doing that is like so far down my list because there's other things that uh, have kind of taken priority. And I appreciate that. Like, I'm, I, I wish well all the comics who have left to go to LA from here. They're extremely talented people and, and I miss them. But I'm so grateful for those of you guys who have stayed here and you're building Salt Lake. Mm. You're building the the entertainment industry here in various ways. I mean, I think I think we could put ourselves on the map. We have so much talent here. Oh, it's a, like, amazing, amazing talent. What, you amazing know? talent. It's, it's cool to see it develop. And it's also cool to see how uh, friendly everybody is. You know, I think when we talked uh, back when I did that episode the first time I was here, like when I started, you know, it was it was the Wild West. Like comics were not nice. They didn't, there weren't cliques. There weren't friendships. People weren't, you know, being best friends and getting together. It was, it was rough. And, uh, and now to like go into the club and see like all these comics hanging out and having each other on their podcasts and sitting down and promoting each other and being best friends, like that's super cool. You know, and so if you would have told me when I started this a dozen years ago that uh, by the time I was 40, uh, this whole place was going to be different and everybody was going to be friends and <laughs> and that I was going to be focusing on clean comedy and, you know, like I would have told you, you're nuts. So wait, you're focusing on clean comedy now? Yeah, that's all we do now. Really? Um, me and Guy, since we started doing the music show, I mean, we discovered there's actually no, there's no language in it at all. And so... What we've been trying to do over the last few years is focus strictly on corporate entertainment, things like, um, because there's so much, there's so many companies in this state. There's so much money. There's so many companies, so many, uh, you know, events going on that people do. And we basically, our music show, we've discovered we can do two, two and a half hours G rated. And so a lot of companies have hired us to do their holiday events, um, corporate events, uh, I think last December we did like 14 corporate events, Christmas parties around town. Flown, we got flown to Vegas. We got flown to Montana. We got flown to Arkansas. Like we've been flown all over for this show, but all because we've been focusing on clean comedy and uh, we've been able to incorporate our act into it in a way that's clean. And uh, we we went to Vegas last year and took this act down there to a to a uh, talent convention, won Rising Stars of the Year with the act. All again. 100% clean. Sure. And so it's it's been really cool because in our in our club shows obviously here around town and stuff we'll we'll dress it up a bit or have fun with it but for the most part we're focusing on uh, completely G-rated comedy which is something that there's not a lot of competition for. So I have a question on 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 your corporate gig shows and your business shows of that. Do you think the podcasts that you've done whether it's Dirt Pod or the Area 52 has brought in any business at all? Just curious, kind of, even for the aspect of like, say, a, say a business wants to start a podcast, right? Like just the benefits indirectly that it could cause. And I'm wondering, maybe maybe it's brought you some business. You know, I guess it's hard to know. Huh? Well, I don't know that I've ever had anybody email me directly and say, hey, I will listen to the podcast. And I'd like to hire you for a gig. 
I don't know that's ever happened. Sure. But I do say that that any kind of recognition and uh, you know people understanding who you are or getting more familiar with what you do, I mean, it yeah. just puts you out there. So. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, and we talked about that in the yeah. beginning. I was just curious. You I know? know some of the talent on my network have gotten big time raises from the podcast. Really, I'd say that. Wayne Thompson Jr., he's now a co-morning host on the Frankie and Jess show, 97.1 ZHT. Him being there is a d- direct result of spending 10 months with Johnny and I on OU Radio. Just the practice behind Just, the microphone. Because he was only getting 14 to 20 seconds um, every 18 minutes um, on his weekend shows. And then his boss says, oh, he can talk. Oh, he's really funny. So oh, they're listening to the podcast. Yeah, then. of course. Yeah, really. they can actually go. That's That's an interesting... I never thought about Brittany that. Johnson went from a producer to a reporter. I think there was a big correlation in her working with Johnny McKeon and I. Johnny McKeon getting hired out of OU Radio. Rebecca Scholander got offered to be the face of My 99.5 and turned it down. So I have seen these direct results with... So all the other podcasts yeah. except ours has been has had <laughs> huge successes with people uh, graduating from the podcast. That's because you guys are intimidating, man. I no. don't understand why <laughs> we're so intimidating. Basically, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to hype up podcasting. I haven't general, moved up in my career right? either, by the way. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, you and me. It, it, just the great things that it could do, and a lot of times people don't realize that, and that's why. I mean, I want to see more podcasts start out there. It's like an, your own ongoing talent reel, too. Yeah. Worst case That's scenario, true. you can say, refer to my podcast. Well, just don't oh, listen, don't Mark, listen to Mark, the first few episodes of <laughs> I Am Salt Lake. Mark could <laughs> shop his, uh, his demo reel anywhere in the country and get a job. I guarantee it. Cool. Yeah. Let's, like, yeah. I don't know if it... Why is this the first I'm hearing about any of this? <laughs> I would like to... Uh, I've told you to apply to jobs before at iHeart. And then <laughs> he's on. like, on his resume, haven't worked in 10 years. Hey, dum-dum, you've been living <laughs> off standing on a stage talking into a mic for 10 years. That's huh. why you haven't had a job. Yeah, so it's well, the that's, way you that's word That's technically thing. work. It's just not traditional yeah. work. You know, yeah. so... Well, listen... Uh, I still feel like it's somehow your fault. So we'll end with this. <laughs> just on that. We'll agree to disagree if it will, but it's going to be that. Uh, Marcus nice. in the morning from South Dakota. I could see this. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> here's, uh, here's Daughtry again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys listen to a lot of podcasts outside of, of what you're doing or, yeah. or not so much? Yeah. I mean, a couple you- of... One or two podcasts that you're really enjoying these days, or three. I just heard the greatest uh, podcast I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, Jim Norton's got a character called Chip Chipperson. Uh-huh. Yeah, he uh, just started his podcast. It's phenomenal. As Chip Chipperson? As Chip Chipperson. He had uh-huh. Donald Trump as his first guest. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Mind blown, right? Yeah. I got uh, Joe Rogan on there. I've got a couple of wrestling podcasts. I've got yours. I like the cow, Cowherd and Whitlock. Speak for yourself. I think that's a good podcast. You, you always just have such good recommendations, Sasha. That's why I was asking you, you know, uh, every Richard, time I talk to you. Richard Deich, uh, it's the Sports Illustrated Media Podcast. Um, I still think he stole it from Johnny and I, but he's uh, he writes about television and radio for Sports Illustrated, and now he podcasts it, and he's unfiltered. He bashes ESPN all the time, bashes Fox Sport 1. He gets all the best broadcasters in the country um on a show and they just do you think that will affect his career in the long run him like is he burning bridges probably Hmm. but he's also a journalist yeah yeah so is there really a bridge to burn for a journalist if you're going to be a call yourself a journalist i don't think so yeah yeah it's uh it's when one of the issues i think now whether it's television radio podcasting is you know if you are a professional journalist is getting too editorial I wouldn't want to see Kim Fisher on a podcast, like have her own show, I, because then she starts bringing her own opinion in, and you can't do that as a news anchor, you know. Interesting. Oh. I never really thought about it that yeah. way. Even Big Buddha, I don't think, as great as a podcast would be of Big Buddha, I don't think he could do it, morally. Because, again, even though he's a feature reporter, he still works with Ben Winslow, right? And Big Buddha can't go and, you know, he can make jokes on Instagram, but he, you can't let him go unfiltered for 50 minutes. Because then he can get in trouble. He's mm-hmm. a journalist. Yeah. End of the day, he's a journalist. And that's an important job. You do have to be really careful when you're in that industry. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a podcast or two that you've been enjoying, Marcus? I listen to ours, to be honest. Like, when they come out, I re-listen to them to make sure they sound good and to make sure 
We didn't say anything stupid. Oh, it's important, man. You and, gotta listen back yeah. to your own podcast. And then that's about it. I mean, I don't drive around as much as other people, so uh, I mean, I subscribe to like like stuff they don't want you to know or like stuff you should know. I don't know. Stuff man, like the, that. the stuff podcasts are awesome. Yeah, I like stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, I don't really listen to other comics podcasts just because. Uh, I just don't have time, you know. There's so many. Mm-hmm. And uh, so anybody who listens to mine, hey, thanks. That's pretty cool. Thanks for taking the time to do that. Do you have any tips, Sasha? I know you're a busy guy, mm. right? With, I mean, you work a lot outside of doing the time management. How do you do it? Well, I don't have a girlfriend or a wife. Okay, so that's your tip. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's the thing I've, I think I've given up. Do you um, think you'll ever regret that, though? Oh, I think there's part of me regret it right now, but I've also had really bad experiences with women. Yeah. Like, I was a total slut for a long, like, all through my 20s. I, you have to. You had to. Yeah. It was a duty. You know, if you're going to represent the Highlander Club, you got <laughs> to pound it out. Yeah. You got to pound it out. I don't want to hear yeah. this. You need to, you need to figure out what works for you. Yeah. You got to go through that to see whether or not it's worth it. Well, no, I mean, because you have, what, almost 10 podcasts on this network, yeah. if not, I, I didn't count them all, but it... it I, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, I, I do one podcast right now. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, how do you do this? You know, and that's what I, I, time It is management. overwhelming, especially I can't imagine doing all of the editing for all of those podcasts every week. Well, that's why we're not selling advertising. Yeah. So, you know, and hopefully one day someone will come along and, uh, you know, offer to buy in or join in or however that would work out. You know, it, at, I've all, I've taken a lot of it doesn't take me as long to edit and get a show up as it used to. Yeah. So you get quicker, I think. And I have a webmaster, it. so I don't have to deal with any of those hardware issues. Um, that's all Dylan's responsibility. Yeah, I guess you just show up, you turn the recorders on, these guys do the, the And I podcast. stay employed. Yeah. And I stay employed, which is tough for me, because uh, I've turned down a lot of great jobs at iHeart, and I'm not there much anymore. And so it's really kind of weird on my brain that they're totally cool with not paying me any money, and I just show up on Sundays and use their great studio. And then let alone have all the traffic that goes through that door on a Sunday. So that's kind of cool. But um, Do you ever see yourself getting your own studio? Oh, yeah. Like, where do you see all this in five years? Mm, own studio, making great money, having hopefully most of the same shows, and, you know, really having a brand name. Maybe a staff kind of doing it all, right? Interns. Yeah, interns. Um, mm-hmm. I'll bring them in from BYU or Utah and educate them on how to become a yeah, you give know, them, it would, they would get broadcasting, you know, technically yeah, broadcasting let's, let's credits. Let's get the make the BYU kids edit, edit my podcast. <laughs> <Damn it>. <laughs> <laughs> if they want a career in this business. B- they have to be able to B- suck sure, it up. Which F word do I end on? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that bad. But I might not be in Salt Lake in five years. So I probably sure. won't be. Well, you don't know. And I probably I I could guarantee it. When my my kid's fifteen, when he's eighteen, I'm gone. So where do you want to go? Mm, Back prob- to Ventura? No, I'll probably go overseas. Do you think you'll still try to run this from overseas? This is the first I'm hearing of any of this, by the way. <laughs> yeah. We have a three-year countdown before you disappear no, you'll to have, be you'll a mercenary. Have, you'll have your own studio, and it will all work the same. I love I love. I just won't have ideas. to show up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, you have your own parking spot. Do you supply the studio? Do I make it myself? I, we'll talk about it. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. There's a lot of details that I feel like we need to hash out. Here comes Diva. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just didn't know how all this worked before you disappeared overseas to become a mercenary or whatever the fuck you're going to... Um, a white man has been seen. They call him Redbeard. He drifts in and out of Chinese harbors. <laughs> He comes in for booze. Some say he'll drink kerosene. They don't know. They can smell his approach. It smells like patchouli and hot pockets. <laughs> oh, Marcus. And that's what you can get if you listen to Dirt Pod in no. Area 52. Right? Yeah, and this email thread's going to go deep, too. <laughs> yeah, I can't uh, Anyway, uh, hey, let's talk about, we have to ask this on the podcast, Favorite local eating spots either one of you have eaten at. Oh, I've got a major a- problem with you and your Twitter people about hamburgers in Salt Lake City. Ham- well, let's, <laughs> let's talk about these here, Christ. Sasha. I didn't know you had a problem. <laughs> Yanni's on uh, 13th East and like 28th South. Best hamburger, Utah. 13th East, 20... 20- I've never the old Greek place, that little white building right there. Oh yes, yes. just past the freeway. In okay, the, uh, in the thing. Uh huh. Yeah, the tri- in the little yeah. right there where where Thirteenth yeah. and then Highland and then. Okay, I know. I used to thing. live right there, and I never yeah. ate there in my life. 
Best gyro, best cheeseburger. Really? Yeah. Is that the best one? I'll I go think over so. there and find. Even better greasy. than Lucky Thirteen? It's so greasy, man. Like I have to eat there all the time because we do Pac-12 baseball at Smith's Ballpark. Yeah. So I'm there like 13 days for 10 hours a day. And you, Lucky Thirteen? I can't, never been I can't there. do it. I, you've never I been to Lucky Thirteen? No. Can we go there right now? Wait, after? you've never been to Lucky Thirteen? No. Wow. I've never been there. I've driven past it. Oh, that counts. And yeah. not the nicest people at the door. But I think their food's good. I think it's an inter- entertaining place. Yeah. But I just find it tremendously greasy. Okay, fair enough. Fair but enough. If I were going to go there, um, Fungus Among Us is great. And they've got a great uh, turkey sandwich, which I had last time. And I'd buy that. E- when I'm there against Cal versus Utah this weekend, I'm buying a turkey sandwich from there. Any mm. places you want to recommend, Marcos? I know you love eating. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it real. Rancheritos, Willie Bertos, Betos. My, my, I love Mexican food. This is, a, eat, this is a guy after my heart. I eat me- <laughs> well, see, I'm nocturnal, so we we lit, we're up at night, and so we 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 kind of relegated to places that are open late. And so, uh, uh, Big Daddy's is kills it on pizza late night. But I mean, I end up eating a lot of like I love burritos, I love tacos, I love all of it. So the Rancheritos up by my house, Willie Bertos, there's Betos down there, Mesquite, I love all of them. I'll eat it, all of them. What do you think, what's, your, what's your favorite breakfast burrito? Uh, Rancheritos has a pretty killer ham and egg breakfast burrito with potatoes. Uh, the Machaca breakfast burrito is killer um, over there. I don't know, just that and a bunch of red salsa. I love it. Horchata, <laughs> get a fresh horchata. I love a horchata. <laughs> I, I love, love it. it. <clears throat> Let's, let's run down the list again. So Utah Podcast Network <laughs> yes. com yeah. is the website. You can go there, see all the podcasts, uh, yeah. all the links to listen. Yeah. iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play on all of them. And then we have an aggregate feed on all of those three too. So you can go to iTunes and type in Utah Podcast Network and then all the shows will show up. So you could subscribe to one feed and get them all. Get yeah. all the shows. That's the way to do it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And then obviously... Leave reviews in iTunes for all these shows. Yeah, say how awesome they are. Yeah, I don't. I don't think a lot of people like to do that. Um, but, but it's yeah. imp- it's important to it's do it. Tough. People it's people don't realize people how important review. it is to leave an iTunes. Well, review. iTunes makes it tough too. Like I'm a pretty smart guy, and I have a hard time figuring out how to write it down. Well, mm-hmm. you, you just go to. You have to do it in your iTunes. You have like on your laptop. Yeah. See, I'm never. Yeah. Yeah. I only you use my phone. You can do it. You can do it in your phone. Can't. It's hard. I'll, I'll show you it's, guys after we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I the way this works is I'm with him. Like social media for podcasts is important because we always tell people like we're going to post feeds on Twitter uh, or Instagram. And so like what he's saying, like he he manages the website, but then we handle our own Twitters and Instagrams for the individual podcasts. But like, so we'll do that and we tell people, you know, follow us or, or post or, or interact. And so I feel like that the, the few people that that interact with us or that like the post, like they're the only ones who listen. That's how I feel about this. I feel like if seven people like the post, it's because seven people listen to the. Like we have one review on, and they're iTunes. all from England yeah. and Austria. They're and all New from Zealand. overseas. Like- <laughs> they're all from like our entire Twitter feed is people from the UK. Not a single, um, maybe one American every once in a while, but like, uh, which is is super dope. But like, I I really feel like eight people subscribe to this lap or to the to this podcast. And like we have one review, so I feel like he's the one guy that liked it. <laughs> this is how I feel. So if you want to change my mind, you know, be interactive. But that's I, I do feel it's important because otherwise I feel like we're talking to nobody. Yeah. And sometimes it feels that way, right? You're yeah. just talking to a wall. Yeah, it's great to interact with your listeners. I like that, especially because we we do things that are interactive. Mm-hmm. You know, like even keep the conversation going online after the recording's yeah. over. I want yeah. be huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about, Sasha, before we wrap this up? I've had a heck of a conversation. I'm so happy that you two are having a baby. Oh, well, thank you. Like, I really hope you get some doctors on and get some good midwives and some nurses. Have it on here. And uh, <laughs> Yeah. Like, that would be yeah. the episode, I already right? offered the Facebook Live. Uh, yeah. yeah. Would that be fun to Facebook Live I it? I get like the GoPro hearing the dialogue, and, yes. like the whole thing. Chris getting slapped swearing. and screamed at. But yeah. you know what, though? This isn't your, like, you've been through this. Yeah, but it still sucks. Oh, I know that it sucks, but like... <laughs> Like, like it would be an interesting kind of uh, description, you know, to kind of go through it and talk about the process. That would be fascinating. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome to record it. I don't know if it'll be listenable. I will be screaming. My and birth yelling. is on a slide I'll be the show. judge of that. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. You watch it, not me. I would love. I would love to. I would love to. I'd love to see it. But I think not see it. 
<laughs> not see it. I don't want to see it. But I'd Me love neither. to hear it. I'd love to hear the episode. I think it would be fascinating to hear you, you son of a bitch. go through the process. <laughs> Birthcast. I oh, love it. Birthcast. I, love oh, it. I think yeah. it could be an educational moment because I think there's a lot of people in this city that uh, don't know how to parent, don't know where to go when they get pregnant. I think you could do a lot with this and yeah. really take it to the moon. Well, I don't think we know what we're doing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're we're figuring it out as as you do it. I mean, that's what that's what they say you have to do. <laughs> vlog about it. Sure. Vlog, vlog, about it. mommy vlog. <laughs> Utah Podcast Always Network. Vlog. Are you on? You're on Twitter though. No. Yeah, I'm on Twitter, Mister Underscore Bloom. Okay, so people. The ear hole can... still on is. Yeah, still it's still. I, yeah, I'm still waiting for that logo. So 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 I I was just wondering how people listening right now you know connect and follow uh, Utah Utah, Utah website, Podcast yeah. Network dot com. Just yeah. go there. Yeah. Follow these great podcasts. We'll end it there. Thank you so much, Sasha. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks. You guys have a great night. Thank you. All right. Many thanks again to Sasha Bloom and Marcus Hardy for coming on this podcast. Head on over to imsaltlake.com slash 274 for episode 274. All the links to connect with Sasha and Marcus are right there. Links for Utah Podcast Network. Go check out some of the podcasts on the network. I'm serious. Yeah. You know, after we recorded with them while I was working the next week, I just went and checked out all the podcasts. There are so many good shows. Yeah. And it's a great way to support some of the local comedians. Absolutely. He has some non comedians on the show, which are producing great, great podcasts. Yeah. He's got, he's getting a real good variety. And I know a lot of people feel like, oh, can I take on a new podcast? I'm already listening to a ton out there. You can. There's always time to make room for a new podcast. That's right. While you're doing dishes, listen to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, we actually got to meet up with one of our Patreon supporters, Gabriel. Yeah. It's a great time. It's always fun to meet new people and meet new people that uh, listen to the podcast. It's very cool. He's new in town. Yeah. He just moved here from up in Seattle. Yeah. And he's uh, he's doing some film projects and stuff. And you know, I'm sure we'll be talking more about that on some episodes. Some episodes of the podcast we met up at, at uh, purgatory which i've been wanting to try for a while it is it's a new bar and restaurant here in salt lake city yeah great place oh, great man. atmosphere can i just say and it's because i love burgers but i can't eat huge burgers right now their burger portions are perfect <laughs> for me at least and i had some cauliflower stuff and fries and whatnot but but what I, the, the point of what i was trying to make is we love to meet listeners of the podcast oh yeah and we love that gabriel reached out to us and he said hey i'd love to meet you guys for lunch i'd love to chat i'd love to get to know you a little bit better so uh it's just a nice way to spend a saturday afternoon absolutely hey this episode of the podcast is sponsored by jed's barber shop with three locations now you have no reason to not always look your best Go get a haircut, a beard trim, or even a straight razor shave. Jed's Barbershop is open seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 9 to 7, and Sunday, 12 to 5. Their brand new third location, it just barely opened up. It's at 167 East, 900 South. It's right next to Randy's Records. They also have a location downtown at 212 South, 700 East, and in Sugar House at 2153 East, 2100 South. No appointments necessary. Just show up, get a haircut, make yourself look good. They're recently voted best in state by City Weekly and KSL. All right, let's wrap this episode up. Yeah. Great episode. Many thanks again to Sasha and Marcus for coming on the show. It was a really good time. And I, I love to see uh, I love to see how this Utah Podcast Network is unfolding. Yeah, how it continues to grow will be really exciting. I'm eager to see where he takes this thing. I really am. Uh, yeah. Great time. Go give them some support and download uh, some episodes from there. Connect with us on Facebook, facebook.com slash I am Salt Lake. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to think of uh, what you think of the show and think of the podcast in general. Yeah. Tell us what you really think. So with that being said, get out and enjoy the city this week. Shop local. Good night, Grammy. <laughs>